guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over this pretty entertaining email that was sent from a subscriber. That's our guy. He is 31 years old, and he shares his story how recently he broke up with his girlfriend after she tried rubbing her guy friend in his face. And you're going to see that it didn't exactly end very well for her or that guy friend who obviously is in the friend zone just waiting for his turn. And the point of this whole story here, which is entertaining, is how he's learned over the years multiple times, avoid the gals with lots of guy friends. Because again, those guys are either there on layaway, hoping to have their shots, so they're always going to be a giant pain trying to go for your girl, or she'll end up cheating on with one of them eventually, if not already. And you're going to see this guy, has he also shares his childhood, how when, it, when he was a kid, he wasn't so tough as he is now, and how his grandpa had a major influence in his life, hardening him to become the tough guy that he is today. And I say tough, I don't mean like a jerk, but just well aware and stands up for himself and all that. So it's a pretty good story here. Some childhood information that I think you guys will appreciate with a cool grandpa, a masculine role model, and then leading into his life and how he's learned to treat gals exactly how they treat him or treat guys nowadays like crap and the result it has. It's definitely an entertaining one for tonight. Hey, says, uh, hello, SSM. I just found your channel a few months ago and I love that you take the time to read the stories from your subscribers. I think there may be some lessons in my own story that you can use, but I'll leave that up to you. Bro, there's a lesson in every story. Every story sent in by you guys has value. Even if you don't make a video of it, just writing everything down was fun. I'm not using my real name or the names of anyone in the story because at least one of my other friends watches your channel and there are some things I don't want people to know about in my life. I've always been a very private person and this is a little nerve wracking setting this, so uh, please don't share my email or real name. Bro, I 100% promise you I'll never, guys, I will never, if you're ever thinking about writing in, I'll never use your real names that will show up, you know, in the email address. I'll never use your, mention your emails or any personal info that, that is revealed at all. But I do suggest whenever you guys send in your story, change the names. Okay, just make sure you change the names. Change, be careful what you say in terms of like a specific company you may work for. Just be vague about that or where you may live. The less details in, in that area, that makes it easier. That, that's all you have to do. But I will never, ever reveal who you are or anything like that. Uh, <clears throat> you can call me Keith, code name of course, and I'm 31. I grew up in a small town in USA where my family has lived for generations. After college, I returned and worked in the business my grandfather started in the 1970s. Actually, the whole family works there in some capacity. I'm the middle child with an older brother and a younger sister. My bro is two years older and my sister is a year younger. My parents are still married and I had a good childhood with the normal childhood issues, but nothing that I ever considered abnormal. I was going to skip talking about growing up, but the lessons I learned from my grandfather are the ones that made me who I am. I think I was, I think I was around nine years old when my brother really started bullying me. So here we're going to get into the things that shaped him as a young man and how grandpa major influence in his life. Grandparents are awesome. Uh, my older brother was bullying me. He did things growing up, but it was around then that it became malicious. I, I don't know if it, if it was because of who he, he was hanging out with or if he just hated me for some reason. But I became the butt of all his anger. I was always a quiet kid, like most middle kids tend to be. And I was a pretty skinny kid. My brother had our dad's build. He's tall and skinny. And I am more my grandfather's build, short and stocky. Grandpa is about five foot six and wide, but fit. He says, sorry, I'm trying to keep this short, but I'm not, able, not sure what to include. By the time I was 13 years old, my brother seemed to find some time in his day every day to hit or torment me, and whenever I brought it to my parents, they scolded him but never did anything else about it. So your brother knows at the end of the day, parents are going to yell at him, but that's it. Your brother is a, is a fucking douchebag. I don't know how he is today as an adult, but you're, when he grown up, he's a fucking douchebag. And you should have beat his ass back. Now, I, you're the middle child, and middle children tend to be the peacemakers, you know? Whether it's three brothers or three sisters or a mixture like yours, usually the middle one is the middle one's usually the one that's ignored the most by the parents. <laughs> it's also the peacemaker between the older sibling and the younger sibling. It's amazing. But you should have beat his ass. Uh, that usually ended up me some more bruises and threats of more if I told him told on him again. I thought that was how most families were, and it was clear that my brother wasn't going to stop and my parents weren't going to make him. Yeah, well, smack your parents for fucking that up. 
He was their pride and joy, and my sister was the princess in the house. I was just there. I'm not whining, just stating facts. What I say about the middle child? My grandfather happened to see my brother punch me one time, and I already learned not to say anything. It was later the day when, when Pops, Grandpa, took me for a drive and asked me why I didn't fight back. I told him that I couldn't because my brother would beat the shit out of me, and he smiled and said, he already is. <laughs> Reminds me of the scene in The Karate Kid where after Miyagi rescued Daniel because all those Cobra Kai dickwads were beating him up and the next day Miyagi said you should go and straighten it out with the teacher essentially and he's like and Daniel Daniel San is like I'll get killed if I go in there and Miyagi's like he could kill killed anyway. He might as well fight back. He says if I was going to get beat I might as well try to get in some of the hits of my own. He told me that when you start running from your fears, you'll never stop. He said, as a man, nobody else is going to save you. Sure, you might get your butt kicked, but you might as well get some self-respect. Shout out to the grandpas out there with grandpa wisdom. Grandparents are awesome. Then he told me about how he used to be into boxing when he was younger and said he would teach me as long as I did not tell my parents. My mom is his daughter and she's always preached non-violence, which makes me smile since she never did anything to my brother. Yep, my mom and dad were nuts about me getting into fights when I was younger, and they scared the crap out of me. They're going to send me off to freaking military school in Alaska or something ridiculous by getting into brawls and fighting as kids. So a lot of times early on, I avoided fights, but that was perceived as weakness, and I'd get picked on all that. And eventually, enough is enough. I kind of I there had an incident in junior high where I just exploded and beat the beat the ass of this kid that was messing with me. It was like in the movie A Christmas Story, you know, when Ralphie, that bully, the redhead pushed him too far and they threw a snowball in his face and they were making fun of him. Ralphie freaked out and beat his ass. That, that was kind of like that. And then I learned, I'll fight back. Over the next couple of years, I changed a lot. I was still a quiet kid, but Pops had me working out and ringing my bell four days a week in his backyard. By the time I was 16, I wasn't that skinny kid anymore and was getting pretty good at boxing. Boxing is awesome. I miss boxing. Boxing was my favorite of, of the different training I did. We did Krav, I did Krav Maga Muay Thai kickboxing, but boxing was a huge element of that. I didn't like kicking because it was fucking exhausting, and frankly, I wanted to keep my feet on the ground. Love boxing. Pops always told me not to hit anyone if I could help it, if I could help it and walk away when I could, so that's what I did. At least until my brother, who was a senior in high school at the time, decided that it would be funny to try and humiliate me in front of all his friends. Your brother is still doing this shit? Well, now he's a senior in high school. I, I got He's got no excuse. He still picked on me every chance he could, but that day he decided that it would be funny to show all his friends how manly he was, and he hit me hard. Something snapped in my head, and I think I might have blacked out a little. But I beat his ass like a kettle drum. It took two of his friends to pull me off him, and he'd end up in the hospital with a broken jaw, nose, fractured rib, and a lot of cuts and bruises, and one eye that was swelled up shut for a few days. Awesome. Could have happened to a nicer guy. He, again, you probably, you probably exploded like I did, or like Ralphie in A Christmas Story. Fucker deserved that. It's not like he was permanently injured. I'm not proud of that. <laughs> I would be. But from that day, he never put his hands on me again. Imagine that. And I'm willing to bet you that even if you didn't give him a beatdown, like if you just fought back and hit him a few times, he probably would have stopped. But So all those years of torment, just boom. Another feeling. My parents were furious. Of course they were. We were in the hospital and they were both screaming at me, threatening to have me sent to juvenile detention center when my grandpa had enough. They told them that this was all their fault because I've been telling them for five years that my brother was abusing me and they did nothing and that my brother deserved what he got. Good for Grandpa. Yeah, your parents, they I'm sure they things have gotten better with your parents since, but they're fucking idiots. Ended up moving with Pops after that and my parents were perfectly fine with that because they didn't want my brother and me anywhere near each other. It put a lot of strain on the family, but I loved living with Grandpa. That's why I started working at his company, Stocking Shells. Great. That's great, man. I'm picturing Gran Torino. Y'all seen that movie with Clint Eastwood? If you have not, please watch it now. And that, that boy next door, the little Asian kid who has no male influence is a total P-U-S-S-Y. And, you know, 
Clint Eastwood being Clint Eastwood really mans him up and, and, and all that and is extremely tough on him. Now, obviously, your grandpa wasn't like Clint Eastwood and Gran Torino, but you got get my point. If you haven't seen Gran Torino, that's where the famous line, get off my lawn, where he's holding, you know, against some punks in his yard. Watch that movie. It's definitely a good one. Uh, feel free to admit that part of my story since I'm not sure if it's important, but that's how I grew up. No, I love telling that part of the story. After high school, I went to college, and that's where I met what I consider my first real girlfriend. I wasn't a virgin, but not far from it, and it, and it was I was still pretty shy. It was in my second year when I met Susan. She was pretty, but not model pretty. She was more like that girl next door. We dated about nine months before I broke up with her. I had my doubts about five months in, but it was at a house party that I gave up. He says here, all of her friends were guys but I didn't have enough confidence at the time to say something. Guys, you get involved with a girl or a girl's interested in you and all her the people she hangs out with are dudes and no girlfriends, massive, red, red, massive parade of red flags there. I mean, because you know, want her hanging out with other dudes or talking to other dudes, you know, she thrives on attention. I knew what her guy friends wanted from her, and she led us all around like we had rings on our noses. It was like she had her own fan club, and I was just a flavor of the day. We met at the party for nearly two hours when it happened. I found her tucked away in a corner with one of her guy friends making out. There you go. At first, I thought about kicking his ass, but I decided that she wasn't worth going to jail for. Instead, I left her at the party, and even and though she tried a lot, I never talked to her again. Good for you. You know? Yeah, if that guy was aware that you were her boyfriend, he deserved an ass whooping. But uh, he wouldn't have been the only one that deserved an ass whooping, if you know what I mean. But you handled the best way possible. You, you damaged her ego for a day, but trust me, she had no problem replacing you because she was young and in her prime. Another thing I'm not proud of at the time of my life is I turned into a complete a hole when it came to women. I was using them like shake and bake bags and dumping them when I got what I wanted, and that included all of Susan's best friends. <laughs> you know, my friend, we have a lot in common. I, too, was a nice guy growing high school and college, but I had moments where I had enough, enough being jerked around that I flipped the script and was an a-hole for a while. And when I was an a-hole, which is not my true character, I got more ass than you imagine because I didn't give a shit. It's amazing, that power. And I started slipping back to my nice guy ways because my being an a-hole just wasn't me. The same bullshit happened again. Until I finally found the happy medium. But hey, bang some of her friends. Who cares? It's funny that her friends didn't mind sleeping with me. Shock. I thought, wait a second here. I thought you said that she didn't have any female friends. I, I thought you said in the beginning they were all guy friends. Unless the people she spent the majority of her time were guy friends. You have to... Let me know about that later on. So much for honor among thieves. I'm not um, some super Chad and I had women beating down my door, but women in college will sleep with anyone. That's the truth. Show me a woman who went to college right out of high school, and I'll show you a woman with more bodies in a graveyard. The funniest thing about that time was the guy she replaced me with got replaced a few months later, and he spent a long time complaining to anyone that would listen how much of a bitch she was, but he remained friends with her. I thought about rubbing it in his face, but she was hurting him more than I ever could. Of course, he remained friends with her. He was that guy, and he never got any from her ever again. After graduation, I went back home and started working for Pops at his company. From then, until, from then until I was around 28, I dated a little. I dated a little bit, but I was mostly focused on saving money, so I didn't try to get into anything serious type of relationships. Good for you. That's the time to bust your ass and to show grandpa working at his company that you're worth taking in and start to learn the ropes and save your money <clears throat> because the younger you start saving your money and then investing it in things that will appreciate and value over time, the longer you have for it to, to grow in value. That's why I say all you young guys in your 20s, live beneath your means. I, and even if you don't get paid a whole lot, find some way to have extra cash or, you know, like, like a business, a profit every month that you can put anywhere to uh, will appreciate and value. You'll, your future self will thank you. Trust me. <clears throat> what was really interesting is that the closer I got to age 30, the more interest I was getting from women wanting a relationship. Well, no shit. You're moving up in the world and establishing yourself, and they're getting close to 30, want a ring on their finger. 
I didn't make a lot of sense because I was still the same guy I was before. I didn't drive an expensive car or wear flashy clothes, but for some reason, these women were all trying to behave like they were good, respectable women, even when I knew better for some of them. Well, of course, they're born again. They're done the college thing and they're born again. Bullshit. Uh, let's face it. In a smaller community, people talk. There is one thing that most of the women I encountered had in common. They all seemed to have multiple guy friends. As soon as I found out, I turned my back on them. Most of the time, that came with insults of me being insecure or selfish. Hey, I don't have to play by society's rules. Call me insecure. Call me selfish. I don't give a shit. Sorry, but I already took a ride on that bus and it crashed. I know what guys are looking for from a woman and it isn't polite conversation. And I suspect that the women also know what they're looking for and just like the attention and the power. You're goddamn right about that. They parade those guys, those nice guys. They keep in the friends and around like women walking around with their little fucking dog, little show dogs. Like, you know those shows when they walk around with the dogs and the dogs jump on something and they and, they, and all that. You know what I'm talking about? Whatever dog shows. That's women and their nice guy. They parade them around to show all those other girls, look at this guy. I got my, my, my you know what I mean? Uh, it's possible that I'm too cynical, but I don't think marriage is in my future. <laughs> Get in line, bro. Not because I wouldn't like to have someone to spend my life with, but because I've met any women worth taking that much of a risk on. He's 31 years old. So he, you know, come on here. He, he sees the market, what it's like. I'm sure there are good women out there somewhere, but they don't seem to live anywhere near me. I am not so far gone to say there are none out there. There are some good gals out there, but that number is dwindling more and more each day. I think the internet and dating apps give them too many options, and I'm not interested in being one of many. It's a good thing my dog likes to spend time with me. You can always count on your dog. Or in my case, your two adorable cats that behave like puppies. Well, the, my one cat behaves like a puppy. The other one's all cat. Loves me to death. The last woman I was talk, uh, started taking serious ended any ideas that I was going to bother with marriage. Brittany, 29 years old. We met by chance. I was shopping and she wasn't paying attention and rammed her cart into mine. It start, I bet she did that on purpose. It started the hell out of me and I know she almost immediately that she was doing something on her phone and not paying attention. I should have listened to my gut and walked away. But we talked for a few minutes while she was apologizing and I asked her out for coffee. After exchanging numbers, we met a few times over the following week and she seemed to enjoy my company. She banged her shopping cart into yours on purpose in hopes that you would strike up a conversation and ask her out or ask her for a number or whatever. Over the next four months, we started doing something a few times a week and having a good time. She had started hinting at a long-term relationship and we told each other about our past dating experiences. There is no way in hell you got the full story on her past dating experiences. I'll admit I was getting hopeful that she was different. Before months in, she said she wanted to introduce me to her group of friends because they were all asking about me. Gee, I wonder who her friends are. I've always believed two principles. If you want to know who a woman is, meet her friends. If you want to know who a woman will be, meet her mother. Yes, exactly. I've seen some beautiful women when they were young, and then I've seen or met their mothers, and I was like, holy mother of God, holy job of the hut. Nope, next. Or I've seen women that have very... Good looking moms, good looking for their ages, of course. It's like, okay. Because these gals are going to have an idea what their mom looks like, and that's going to, you know, have an impact on what they do with the, how they take care of themselves and all that. And yes, her friends. You always pay attention to her friends. It was a Saturday afternoon, and we were going to meet them at a pizza hut for lunch. And told there were five people waiting for us two other couples and a guy sitting by himself. As soon as we walked in, it was impossible to miss the frown that sprouted on the single guy's face. But everyone else was smiling and seemed pleasant enough. Uh, when we sat down, I'm not sure if it was prearranged or just by chance, but Brittany was sitting between me and the single guy I'll call David, who's 27. She's playing games. Introductions were made and lunch was mostly pleasant. Brittany introduced all of her friends, and when she made it to David, she introduced him as her best friend. I wouldn't say he grimaced. <laughs> best male friend. This is the, the guy that, obviously by his behavior and the fact that he's showing up to this, hasn't gotten her yet. And is jealous of hell of you. 
and will always be a problem. The look on his face is more like constipation, and I knew the lay of the land immediately. Periodically, while we were all talking, David would start talking about something that he and Britt had done in the past that I wouldn't have, have any way to respond to. Even now, and th even now and then, while they were talking, he would touch her arm or shoulder. As friends, you know, nobody at the table seemed to see anything wrong or were smart enough to stay out of it. The entire thing almost felt like a test. It's always a test, bro. It's always a test. And the more beautiful the woman is, the more she's going to do tests and bullshit, unless she perceives you as a very masculine alpha type of guy. But even then, it's going to be fucking test. It was after I said something to one of her friends and David said something snarky, and I knew he was trying to embarrass me. Motherfucker, I'm the one banging the girl that you obviously follow around like a little puppy dog, and you're going to make snide remarks to me? I thought about letting it go, but figured, why should I? I don't think the rest of the lunch went the way it was supposed to. I looked at him with the most sincere expression I could muster and asked him where his girlfriend was since there were three couples at the table and that he must have felt a little out of place. <laughs> the reaction around the table was hilarious. The other couples were watching me with bulging eyes and their mouths open. David's face turned red, and the insult to injury was when Brittany patted the top of his head and said that uh, someday he would find a woman who loved him because he's such a nice guy. <laughs> patted him on the top of the head like a fucking poodle. It was like she had no idea that she just spit in his eyes, but I think her other friends saw it right away because one of the other women tried to change the topic, while David just sat there glaring at me. Fuck David. He's an ass. Oh, I guarantee you, the other women in the group know what's going on. If not for one of the other guys at the table smirking at David, the rest of the lunch would have likely gone without incident. But I guess David noticed and told the guy, F you. It was, it was kind of out of left field, and everyone was a bit shocked at his outburst, especially me and the guy he was talking to. That only made the other guy start laughing, and David was angry while everyone was staring at him. <sighs> you know, my man... You would have saved yourself a lot of time and energy if you met her friends earlier, you know? But at least you got some ass out of this, and clearly you weren't attached to her, and you got a good story from me. Uh, then Brittany asked him what was wrong, and he just mumbled, nothing. Honestly, I felt bad for the dude, and after seeing their friend group, I already decided that I didn't want to be part of it at all. Either she was so clueless that she didn't know the dude was head over heels in love with her, or she was so heartless that she didn't care. I'm going to go with option B. Women know when guys are hot for them. Come, They love the attention. Come on. In either case, it's not the kind of woman I want to be associated with. I decided to leave before things got out of hand, but before I got up, I looked at David and told him a few things I think he needed to hear. I said, look, dude, it's clear to everyone here that you're in love with Brittany. Oh, ho, ho. Either grow some balls and take your shot or grow some self-respect and drop her out of your life. My guess is you're the guy she keeps around as a placeholder when she's not dating someone she's interested in. If she was the least bit attracted to you, I wouldn't be here. Oh. Bro, you're doing what I do. Being blunt as hell. You were smacking him with your words. And I'm sure he fucking hated you for that. Uh, you could have seen less chaos if zombies charged in to kill everyone. The other couples were looking at me in complete shock. Brittany was staring at me with her mouth hanging open, and David started to get out of his chair angry as hell. <laughs> David, you don't have a chance. I told him, dude, it's not personal, so sit down. Getting your ass beat in front of your friends isn't going to help. And I walked out after tossing some money on the table. <laughs> There are some people that are going to listen to this and say you're an asshole. And you know what? Fine. This guy was being... Make if this guy wasn't making snide comments and stirring up some shit towards you, then that'd be different. But because he was making snide comments at you, and I'm sure he didn't include everything, you have a right to say this. And frankly, you were doing him a favor. Whether he listens to your advice or not, who the hell knows? And Brittany's a piece of garbage because she deliberately had him there to show him what he's missing and to cause drama. She knew that he was jealous and there's going to be some, drama, 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 right? Uh, I only heard from Brittany one more time after leaving them all stunned at the restaurant. It was about a week later and she was yelling at me for being an a-hole. 
It's like, bitch, I don't care. I can replace you. I told her to either date the guy or set him free, but it was selfish to string him along before I hung up and blocked her phone number. That was four months ago, and I have no idea what happened to any of that after that. If he has a single brain cell, he'll run and never look back. But that dude was so thirsty, he'll probably hold on to hold on. He'll probably hold on to him until she. She'll probably hold on to him until she runs out of options for guys to take her seriously. Some guys never learn until it's too late. But like my grandpa said, nobody's coming to save you. Be a man or be a victim, but you can't be both. So that's my story, SSM. Maybe there's something you can use here, but if not, that is fine. Bro, that was a great story. And it shows you a lot of things, guys. But again, I don't blame him for what he did and how girls will string along these guys and put them in the friend zone all that. And this is why you be very careful with these girls with guy friends. And even if these guys, they, they trot around like they're walking their fucking poodle at the Westminster Dog Show, whatever the hell it is that they parade the dogs around, everybody oohs and ahs because the, the poodles... You know, the, the, the ears look like this and the legs look like whatever the fuck it is. You get my point. That's what they do to these nice guys. You don't need that in your life. And women don't care. And they know that these guys are hot. They like the drama. They like the attention. So you have a right to do what you did. And so guys, be aware of the girls that have lots of guy friends. Or the ones that say they only have guy friends. That's just a recipe for disaster. <laughs> so bro, I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you beat your older brother's ass. You didn't mention your relationship with your brother now all these years later. I'm going to probably guess you're not exactly best buddies. But uh, in fact, your brother should be kissing your ass after all that. But your grandpa is awesome. Great for your grandpa for taking you in and giving you words of advice that you need. It makes you think again of Grand Torino and Clint Eastwood teaching you how to fight. And you stood up for yourself and you beat his ass. Good for you. And uh, I'm sure none of his friends ever forgot that. I'm sure nobody ever messed with you after that. But you had to go through hell to become the man you are, and good for you. And maybe one day you'll take over Grandpa's company and do a great job because you're a tough guy and you ha- you can be an asshole when necessary because you can't run a business, let alone a, a, a growing one, without kicking some ass from time to time. That's just how it is. You've got to be able to confront and uh, be tough. But anyhow, bro, good for, good story, though. And I know you said, hey, you wouldn't want my one day having a serious relationship, but you can't find any chicks worth your time. That may be the case, but you know what? I'm sure you're well aware at 31, you're really not missing a whole lot. And there's a lot of guys watching this that are, are married or were married and been through all this shit, and they'll back that up and say you're not missing much. So, guys in the comments section, give me a shout-out for sending in a good story. Give him a shout-out for kicking his brother's ass. Give him a shout-out to Grandpa for being an awesome Grandpa. And let him know if he's not, miss- he's not missing anything. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.